how am I getting this frame rate in Battlefield 6 at 4K Ultra settings? This feels like it shouldn't be possible. If someone told me five years ago that I'd be playing Battlefield 6 on launch day, topping 400 FPS at 4K with Ultra settings, I would have slapped the cup of crazy juice right out of your hands. But this type of performance has been made possible with Nvidia's DLSS 4 and multi frame gen tech. I'm not lying when I say that seeing this frame rate made me impulse buy a 4K 240 hertz gaming monitor. I thought I had another few years before I had to even consider making an upgrade to more frames on 4K. But Nvidia are moving through time at their own speed. Moore's law be damned. How about the law of more FPS. Now, I want to give NVIDIA a huge shout out for sponsoring this video and also working with DICE to help them push their graphics to a level that is just absolutely crazy. Going back to classic games like Battlefield 5 with NVIDIA's RTX ray trace reflections still looks amazing today. And now Battlefield 6 is one of the best optimized Battlefield games ever, which can be further boosted by NVIDIA's incredible DLSS4 technology and multi-frame generation. I'm I'm playing the game on a 50 series graphics card, and if you've been trying to get your hands on one but perhaps found them to be sold out, they are now restocked and reloaded. So you should now be able to pick up these cards at retail prices. Check my link in the description for more info. Now, I want to take a look at some of these DLSS 4 settings and talk about what you can do to sort of min-max your performance, latency, and all the crazy features around it. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, even going back as far as the 20 series, you'll still get access to various features of DLAA and DLSS. DLSS stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, which is used as an AI upscaling technique so that games can render more frames at lower resolutions and then upscale them to native resolution. And NVIDIA Nvidia's tech on this front is incredibly good. It's so good, in fact, that you would be hard pressed to find an actual difference between the image quality of a native render and a DLSS render. And it's become an absolute no brainer to turn on DLSS whenever it's available. It'll just give you more FPS at no perceivable image quality loss. And you also get control over this quality as well. You can adjust the upscaling quality here in the settings menu. And when I play at 4K, right? Running on performance tends to give me incredible results and I can't notice any sort of image quality degradation. Now, if you already have a 50 series card in your machine, you can get access to multi frame generation in game. From here, I can adjust this from two to three to four. That would be double the frame rate at two, triple at three and four times at four. This means that NVIDIA is generating frames in between the existing frames to give a more fluid visual. And they do this using AI image gen technology, which is really crazy. And you can see that with each level that I increase, the frame rate also increases substantially to the point where I'm pushing just way past my monitor's maximum refresh rate. Only future technology will even be able to appreciate the absurd 4K FPS that this setting can push. Now, frame gen will add render latency to your game. In fact, it even says that in the menu. And typically speaking, most competitive games and gamers will say you want to get your input latency as low as possible. So they might recommend against using features like frame gen. However, thanks to Nvidia's constant pursuit of improving this technology and adding features like Nvidia Reflex, which reduce your input delay even further, there's actually a pretty compelling argument to be made for being able to use frame gen even in a competitive setting. And because I approach Battlefield as a casual competitive gamer, I do want the best experience all around. Is it better to play with or without frame gen? So I actually played extensively with both frame gen on, frame gen off, and even frame gen at lower settings to test things out. I even went into the shooting range and quickly toggled between frame gen on and off to see if I could perceive a latency difference. And to be honest, I couldn't. But I don't really like leaving you guys with a sort of hand wavy answer as to why I can't perceive the input delay difference. The thing is, when I play Battlefield 6 with no frame gen enabled, I'm running a 5090 in a very powerful system, which means I get usually between 150 to 200 base FPS. When I enable frame gen, it does slightly lower my base, my real FPS, which is what my latency is based on, to generate more frames from that. 
but my base latency is already so good that when I turn on frame gen, I might be adding between one to three milliseconds of additional latency, which I think is imperceivable to the vast majority of gamers. Now, because I'm playing on a monitor that has a 240 maximum refresh rate, getting anything over 240 is more or less going to be lost on me. So when I use four times frame gen, I'm generating a lot more frames than I actually will be able to perceive while I'm playing. And what I like about the way that Nvidia has designed multi-frame gen is I can actually dial it down to a point where it creates just as many frames as I need. When I drop the frame gen down to 2x, so it's only creating one AI frame for every real frame, it gives me the minimal amount of added latency and it gets my frame rate much closer to that 240 mark that I'm looking for in combat. So it gives me that smooth, fluid experience that my monitor is capable of handling. It doesn't push much further beyond that and it adds minimal input latency, which is an excellent balance given my specific hardware. And that's what's nice about it. It allows you to dial things in for your specific hardware. But if you had a monitor that can go up to those insane refresh rates, you can pump frame gen all the way up to 4X and just get a ludicrous amount of fluidity in your game. And especially with single player experiences where the graphics tend to be a bit higher and the latency isn't quite as important as multiplayer, it becomes an even more compelling argument to turn frame gen up to the max. Now, if you watch my Battlefield 6 review, you'll know that I'm absolutely loving this game. And that joy of playing has come hand in hand with frame gen. I've been using it this entire time to play. It's been a fantastic experience. I've never ever in my entire life played a game at this buttery smooth frame rate with a monitor that can do 240 fps so bf6 is literally the smoothest game i have ever played in my entire history as a gamer and it's kind of cool for this to be that game. It's the last game I would have thought about that could have achieved such insane FPS. And yet here we are pushing a 240 Hertz 4K monitor past its refresh rate. And once again, thanks to Nvidia for sponsoring this video and pushing GPU tech just to obscene levels. If you guys want to get in on some of this crazy multi-frame gen technology, check out the 50 series graphics cards. There's a link for them in the video description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe for more Battlefield 6 content, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.